It's not often that I take time for commentary about the interviews that I've conducted or the people that I've showcased on my shows over the years. In fact, most people don't know what I really think or what I feel about anything. They understand that I'm bringing to the table those that would be inspirational or share some kind of education along with their passion and their dedication to their life's mission or work for the betterment, hopefully, of humanity. But today I'd like to take a minute to speak some truth from my perspective. You see, I've been in the middle of many, many interviews in the last few years working to distill down to the truth, maybe the best common denominator, a way out of the chaos that our humanity finds ourselves in. And it's been my dedication and my goal all the way along that we find a thread of inspiration that tickles the spirit and perhaps moves us in the direction of change, which is so needed on this planet at this time. You see, ever since I was a kid, I've always had a knowing. And maybe that's come from being sort of a medical intuitive and some would call it a spiritist in life. But I'm not thinking of myself as a spiritist so much as I just had a knowing. And that knowing since childhood was that this time that we're in now would come. And I had no idea that this time would have words called pandemic or the C word or the V word associated with it. But instead, I just knew this time would come. And I spent several years contemplating, and I mean several years, what could I do that would have any meaningful impact in this earth plane? What would I offer that would be of help to people and not a distraction? What could I do that would give them hope or solace or inspiration? And I came up with the idea of making life brighter. Not making life better, rather making life brighter. You see, from my perspective as a kid, the world glowed. The world glowed from people's spirits, the ones they themselves couldn't even see. The ones that they denied in one another on a regular basis, yet demanded somehow that the other show their spirit more. The irony to that is we're blind to what's being shown. More often than not, we dismiss the beauty of the spirit standing in front of us. We dismiss the kindness the simplicity and the kindness that's being offered to us. And instead, we find ourselves lost in a world of insincerity. But as a child, I could see these energies, this light. And more importantly, I could feel what was going on inside people. So when I conduct interviews with people, I have a strange phenomenon that takes place. And I feel the audience. I even feel in advance the audience that will be coming. 
I don't know how that's possible, but I do know it's possible because it happens every single time. And when I do an interview, it's like a dance. It's like conducting a play in a way. Maybe you're the conductor of the musicians in front of you somehow weaving together, making sense of these notes. And somehow orchestrated as it is, it always comes out perfect when you least expect it. And when I do interviews, I don't prefer to know as much as today's goofy world expects of us. I really like it to be organic. I like it to be spontaneous. I like it to be real and or just pure. Because that's what brings out the sincerity in the guests and the people that are speaking. And you, the listener, will know that. There's always those that sit behind their computers and say, oh, well, look at this, I need that, I need this, I need that. What do we need today? What we need is what's inside of us. That's what I feel we need. I've come to understand some things that the world doesn't even know yet in these interviews. Information that's not even put out yet. At the end of the day, we're still missing our spirit. We're missing the connection to our source within us, so profoundly awaiting us that instead we're looking for hard data to prove something mostly a right or a wrong. And as I looked at all this, and I've contemplated and looked back over what I've been talking about, what I've been offering, there's so much dialogue about deep state. And I had to laugh and I thought, you know, the real deep state that we're in is a deep state of disconnect from our spirits and a deep state of judgment. Men can't even uphold their wives without judgment. Not all men, of course, but many. Judgment, from my perspective as a medical intuitive, as someone that assists people in healing energetically, atomically, when I go into a body and can look at all the different things in a body energetically, finding the source of the illness distills down to judgment either self-judgment or a plethora of judgment in uncontrolled thoughts toward others. Judgment has us running, not loving. the deep state we find ourselves in continues to be one not so much of unity but of fear now we fear each other's air don't get near me I might breathe the same air you might breathe out and I could breathe in I wonder what first responders do Do they go to work every day wondering that? Or do they just show up and trust, put their faith in their spirit while taking as best the precautions they can?
You ever wonder if the animals run around in the woods and are fearful of humans because of the C word? I doubt it. But they're fearful of humans at a core level because of the disconnect in our hearts. And I would say, from my observation, the disregard we have for what we've been given in this lifetime and on this planet. We don't truly covet one another. We continue to compete with one another. It appears to me that there seems to be a disconnect from spirit which leads to competition. And as a great master said, that leads to stagnation and waste. However, cooperation leads to infinite possibility. Though there's a lot presented in these interviews that are meant to be a bit of a wake-up call for people, and a sincere one, showing strength, showing conviction, holding passion toward that conviction. The honor comes with honoring what's at home first. The honor comes when you open your heart to true love. and are able to take in lovingly the ones around you that are offering love instead of telling them how stupid they are instead of pushing back your best people and setting them by the wayside instead of saying your way is the only way and it's the right way If all hearts softened like we did on the day of 9-11 and time seemed to stop, if we could only hold that space a little bit longer, we might find a difference. We might find a change long enough that humanity would remember. But when we're so fixed on how dark, dark is, or what I can get from you, or what I'll line you up for so I can take from you, then we lose sight of why we're here. I've seen this again and again in my healing work. When we get to the bottom and the core of somebody's illness, this theme happens and shows up over and over again. And the one elixir to that theme, of course, is love. But what is love? Maybe that's what we're missing. Somebody forgot the definition in the Black Law Dictionary of what love is. What is true love? Love in outer space doesn't need a colon. Love on earth doesn't need a colon. However, when you combine that, you get a powerful vortex, something that you can't explain, but you can definitely feel. What is love? It 
Is it a righteousness or is it a soft, beautiful consideration? Trusting that someone else means well. If parents never held a space for a child to grow and learn, the child will ultimately come out beaten and dejected. When we as adults hold space for others, and sometimes with a need for correction, but when we hold space with the beauty and the sanctity of a loving harmonic. You can't deny that. Everybody has their gift and everybody has a contribution in this world. In the times that we're coming into soon (laughs) may test our resolve in holding that harmonic and that frequency. But I think it begins with each one of us. And holding the door lovingly for another. In the consideration truly of another allows us to step through the door ourselves no matter what we've been through. There's more love on this planet right now today. There's more change and a frequency of change on this planet. But can we see it? So many people are suffering. I know that by what you write in. I feel that deep in my heart. And I also feel a responsibility for what I put out to you. What you get is information. I'm not talking about things to fascinate the brain, but I'm talking about things that really matter. Things that make an impact. Things that touch people's hearts and souls. And I know that's happening based on what you say. I know you're listening and I realize you're suffering. Hopefully, some of what's being put out is a solution. And those that put out the solutions will stand. And stand with you. Many times people have said, the world's going to an end, so just help yourself. True, if I help myself, I'm stronger for you. And there's a balance in that. But if I help myself so much that I don't consider you, now we're back to the imbalance again. In this, I've put together in the last year the quantum healing meditations to help people stay balanced through these times, to help people continue to connect and reconnect, just so that they can relax and come back into themselves. that they might know more of who they are at the end of the day. And they might endeavor to know themselves wholly before their time on this planet is up. You see, when I was a kid, I saw a lot of life and death at an early age. But thankfully, my knowingness of spirit was 
a grand elixir through the difficulty of death. And so many people are being programmed to fear death right now. I don't want to get it. I'm afraid. I might get sick. Somebody else I know is going to get sick. Yes, that's happening. But there's a timing to people's heartbeats in their lives. We can't lose sight of what I'll call God's timing for each one of us. Nobody in government dictates your timing. Your spirit dictates your timing. That couldn't be more clear than the other day when I helped a woman who was suffering because her sister was dying of complications from the C word. And she was very distraught, and she reached out for a session for help. And in the session, we connected into the spirit of her sister. And as that connection became more and more apparent to her, the deep grief eased away, and the awe and the wonder of spirit took over. And at a certain time, about halfway in, I said to her, don't be surprised if your family reaches out to you at this moment to let you know that she's peacefully gone on. We continued with the session, which put her at great ease and gave her a grounding, a settling, a knowingness. And all the fear and the anxiety and just the hurt of losing someone you love slipped away and instead was replaced by a knowingness of love, a remembrance of the truth in spirit, the infinite, the infinite, the unconditional lovingness of spirit. And don't you know, when we got done a few minutes after the session closed, she sent me a text showing me the message that had come in at the time that I suggested her sister could have passed. And in fact, she did at that moment. And she was in awe and wonder How could I know that? And how could she be so settled and at ease and so close to her spirit, even though the others were sitting closer to the body and watching? You see, in my work, it seems to me we're losing sight of the more important things in this world. We're dismissing one another and taking them for granted. And yet, spirit is right there all the time, never far. There's no magic in that. It's a beautiful divine gift, and it's for everyone, always and forever. There's never a lack of it, and it's always there. The key is honoring it in one another, genuinely holding it dear. Far too often, I see people betray that in one another.
They don't hold it dear. Luckily, through all the death I've seen in my lifetime, I've been given the gift to see those beautiful exchanges on the other side. Because once you hit the unconditional love space, it's really all there is. You lose the persona of this world and the silliness of our judgments. And I know this because I've had people that were dying that I was assisting, maybe dying of cancer or something. And I was there with them for their journeys and their transitions. <laughs> and they would cross over into the other side and then come back again. And they would say to me time and time again, oh my gosh, Winnie, you were right. You were right. You were talking about this all along and I saw it. It's real. And I'd say, it is real. Now you've experienced it. And because you've experienced it, you can't deny it. And nobody can take that away from you. Once you've truly experienced that lovingness at that level and the unconditional lovingness that exists around you, you cannot deny it. So therefore you come back to the earth plane with a bright glowingness, even in your deathbed, on a <laughs> the most horrific of circumstances. And you come back with something that is absolutely undeniable. Most people share that as a gift. Oftentimes people will come back and speak about it endlessly with their doctors and their nurses. And even the doctors and the nurses are in awe and very inspired because it helps them in their moments of despair. When humanity is heavy and suffering is great, and what a beautiful moment in the middle of all that. I've witnessed that time and time and time again. And I've even witnessed the extension of the contracts of life. Because people are given another opportunity to get it right. That's humbling. That's profound. Today we seem to have an inordinate amount of childishness, of a grab and take attitude. I'm going to get you. I'm going to pull you down. I'm going to do something, whatever the something is. Disparage you, whatever. Whatever all that is. Lie about you. Position you. Set you up. And then the funny thing is, if those people don't make it, by the time they get to the other side, whoops, kind of like my dad found out. You can be a great mason on earth, maybe. Maybe. And you get over there and you realize, uh-oh, maybe I didn't do that so well. Maybe I could have done more. Maybe I could have taken the time sincerely. And the judgment that comes then, after all the judgment that was given out during a lifetime is a humbling reminder that we have an opportunity while we're here to stand 
in loving kindness, even when it's hard. But you don't break another down in the process. So when we get our life review, which really does happen, we get to analyze what we've thought along the way and how those thoughts have affected others along the way. I know this because I've not only been told from people that have gone back there and come back again, but also I've been witness to it. This is a grand opportunity. And it's an opportunity to extend a hand to one another, not be afraid of someone else's breath. Tomorrow if I walk out and I never do another broadcast again because I breathe someone else's air and I died because of it, I hold no malice. I love I hold no malice. I may have sadness based upon the ignorance that's in this world and the forgetfulness to the remembrance of spirit. But I don't regret sharing air with another lovingly. So many times I've been called upon to help people to show up and assist them when they're very, very ill. Contagious, for that matter. But somehow, I've never died. Well, that's not true, actually. I've died many times. But I've not died, finally, because of someone else's illness. So who's controlling that? Did I just get lucky? Or when I've been on my own deathbed, and boy have I been on my own deathbed along the way. In fact, it's kind of grace that I'm still here. That somebody is working through me to help the person in front of me when I couldn't even stand up anymore. So my offering is don't be fooled by the illusion of the mechanics of the earth plane. There's something far greater and something even more that's being offered here. It's judgment that kills It's setting others up that kills people's spirits. Are we including lovingly or are we fearful? I don't mind if I die being loving. I mind if I die being fearful. I wish you all a go jolly day. May spirit be that which you seek today. May inspiration from any of these things being offered here be something that you walk with and remember be with the listening. Your spirit is always talking and always offering. May you look to that for solace and not your brain. Thank you for listening. Go Jolly.